Today I'm going to talk about managing distributed teams from your pajamas. Um, so a bit about myself. Uh, in the last uh, six years, I was leading uh, distributed teams uh, at Elastic, uh, which is the company behind the uh, open source project Elasticsearch, Kibana, Bits, uh, Logstash, and also Giant Swarm. And uh, starting with last year, I, I started uh, two new companies, uh, and uh, one of them, Xata. Uh, Xata is uh, offering um, server step database uh, for uh, Gemstack applications, and also uh, Tupo, which is a non-profit organization um, to help um, uh, that offers uh, free mentorship for non-representative uh, people in tech. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, how uh, explaining a bit about these three types of engineering teams. So the first one is the classical one, uh, the on-site where basically everyone is working from an office. Uh, then remote, uh, basically when uh, people or when the company starts to um, hire people um, um, that are working remotely in addition to the to the people that are working in an office. So basically it's a mixture. And the third type is um, a team that is fully distributed. People are working from home. Particularly <coughs> very similar with what we are experiencing now in this uh, pandemic times. Um, a few years ago, many people had doubts uh, about the productivity of a, of a fully distributed team. Um, and uh, though, you know, there were so many uh, successful open source projects uh, that kind of prove that uh, you can build a, a successful uh, product with people uh, spread around the world. And, you know, there are so, such great examples like Linux kernel, uh, Firefox, Ubuntu, MySQL, Kubernetes, and these are just a few of those, right? Um, and also there were many companies uh, that kind of took this model of an open source um, model and they were fully distributed from then. And here also you, you can see a few examples uh, like Elastic, Sketch, uh, Auth0, GitLab, uh, Stack Overflow, and many, many others. Um, but then, you know, Corona uh, came and, and, and basically people were forced to work from home uh, during this pandemic times. And uh, many companies struggled there because overnight they had to uh, change their style of working from a, an office culture uh, to a kind of a distributed culture, right? And this is this is challenging because you know both they have nothing in common, so you have to uh, rethink everything more or less from scratch how you are working with your team and how you are becoming productive and things like this. So that's why I want to talk today about uh, the distributed work model. And let's start with um, some advantages. So what advantages you as an employee uh, of a distributed company have? And uh, first one is that you are working from home. Um, so you, uh, you don't have to commute to work. And maybe for hopefully for many of you, this is not a problem because you probably have to have you have a short commute time to work but for many people out there especially people in us where they have to uh, go to work uh, uh, one hour and then come another hour so they will basically save two hours of their life and uh, work on something else that makes them happy so flexible schedule is also another um advantage basically you are not forced to do the entire work in a in a big slot you know the traditional nine to five you are able to um to plan your day um as you want um so and, and also to have time to do something else uh, in between um, so this also allows, allows you to have a better uh, work-life balance. 
um, which is kind of is a, a big advantage in my opinion because it allows you to uh, to do other things that you know makes you um, fulfilled in one sense so you can for example um you know go to uh, to doctor whenever you want in the middle of the day you can uh, go and attend uh, um, a sport event of your kid you can take your kids uh, early uh, for school uh, without uh, you know feeling guilty that you are leaving uh, the office at 3 p.m and things like this right um and in the end i think this is what makes them makes people happy right being able to to do what you like um and also um you know you don't have to uh sacrifice uh, some personal um projects if you want in order to be able to have a career i think this is what makes um, most of the people happy um, so that's, in my opinion, that's a big advantage. And, you know, uh, no need to relocate. So in a traditional way, you're probably, you've seen a uh, job offer uh, in, in a big city. So if you're living in a small, uh, in a small village, for example, you had to move um, and uh, to a big city in order to have a particular job. But with this model, basically, you can have your desired career without you know, moving the place that you love to, 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 to leave. Um, so let's see also, you know, we've seen a lot of advantages, what people from, you know, from your advantages, but let's see what are the company advantages. So I think in my opinion, you know, being having happy employees uh, this will make them like unlikely to leave the company uh, because you know they are happy they want to continue working uh, for this amazing company um, and this will also make people uh, more motivated right because they want to um, they want to put their efforts um, more effort in, in making the product that they are building more success because they really believe and they really want the companies to be successful in order not to lose these benefits. Right? And uh, there were some studies and uh, here there was a survey uh, made by Casa Cloud in 2015 that showed that um, this distribution model also increased productivity. And uh, there are so many, um, um, you know, things that you can read to kind of prove that a distributed model increased, increases productivity, which people kind of had doubts, um, you know, for a lot of time. And in this survey, 23% um, peop of people that were interviewed said that they are willing to work uh, for longer hours to get more done. Um, there are 52% that said that they are less likely to take time off. 40% uh, of those said they are accomplishing more in less time. And what is interesting is that 77% of those they have uh, um, an, you know, an improved productivity while working from home. Another big advantage for a company is that you can hire the best talent uh, across a region, across a continent, or across uh, even the globe, right? Um, so you are not uh, restricted to, um, to, uh, um, to um, a city, right? Uh, so with this, you can basically have um, more better qualified people right in your company um and then i mean if you are building you know a company that uh, so you need to have uh, support coverage you know being distributed helps you right you uh you if you want to cover another time zone you hire another person in another another time zone you don't have to find ways how to 
um, you know, put people work in different shifts, uh, work uh, during the night, work, you know, uh, as, you know, a certain uh, um, time frame during the day in order to cover other time zones. And, you know, there are so many statistics there that say that diverse teams build better products. And let's think a bit about this. So what I mean by diverse team is not necessarily about gender. I guess most of you here think about this, but diverse teams means also that, you know, teams uh, or people that have a different background, a different nationality, a different culture. And imagine that this is also important because imagine that you are building, your company is building a lock for, uh, for um, uh, to be used by you know different different people around the world. And if you your team will be consisting of only of let's say white males that did the same uh, pre the same prestigious uh, university uh, in US, they probably have the same ideas. And you know the audience that they are building the pro the, this product is very diverse, is very different, and they have different expectations from this product. So by basically having a, a diverse team, you kind of have diverse ideas that go into, uh, into, into this product, and then the product will be, yeah, be have better results and will be better appreciated by, um, by a wider audience of, of your uh, users. Um, so there were some statistics done uh, in 2016 or, or 2017 that said that diverse teams have 90% higher revenue due to innovation. And what I mean by diverse, um, they took into account gender, nationality, career, industry, age, and education. And basically you see here uh, that companies with um, below average uh, in diversity, you know, lowered the score, uh, lower um, for, for innovation. Okay, so let's see now uh, from a, a perspective of a manager, like what are the things that you need to take into account when managing a distributed team? So let's start with the challenges. Um, and obvious first one is communication, uh, because I think the most uh, difficult is to keep everyone on the same page. And uh, the way we, uh, we managed to do that, for example, Elastic was to, um, you kind of need to learn to be more organized, to take notes uh, when you are having a, a meeting call, uh, just to be um, available for everyone in the team, maybe the one outside the team that uh, kind of need to have um, an outcome of that meeting. Um, work independently, it's a challenge, especially, you know, for um, those people who just finished university and they don't really have experience with uh, a working environment. I, I personally believe that it's kind of difficult for them to, uh, to adjust because they need a bit more coaching, which is, in my opinion, a bit challenging to be done uh, over, you know, in a distributed manner. Time zones. Um, time zones is, in my opinion, challenging um, when, you know, the, the team that you are leading across the continents. For example, at Elastic, I was leading teams that are based in the U.S., East Coast, West Coast, and also Europe. Uh, and for a shorter period of time, I also managed, um, uh, in my team, there were people from Asia, and it was kind of challenging for us to find time for, for our meetings that fit everyone. Um, so I believe that time zone is really a, a big challenge when you have to <laughs> cover, when you have your team from all the continent, you know, from Asia and, and um, 
or Australia, uh, Europe, and also the US. Isolation is also something that I think you need to be aware of um, and make some um, effort to avoid that. Um, especially when you hire people in a you, when you have someone in a new time zone um, than the other team members and sometimes this can feel um, that person can feel isolated and i think it's important to to make sure you have a big overlap meaning a few hours a day between uh, the team members in order to be able to to synchronize between work I think this is in um, the, the, the most important thing because I feel like if you have very very good and talented people in the company they are very motivated they are very willing to to do whatever they can in order to make the company succeed to make the product succeed often work is um, is happening and you have to be careful uh, when someone is approaching uh, burnout uh, because you know when you're working from home is very uh, difficult to um, you know to to turn you off because it's hard to make this differentiation between you know uh, your personal life and work and sometimes you say, okay, I got a Slack message. Yeah, yeah why not a Slack message, right? So sometimes it's hard to, to make this. Okay, so let's talk about collaboration. Um, yeah, so I was saying that it's very important to use the right tools for video conferencing. And I think we are living now in an era, there are so many options there. Uh, for example, Elastic, we use Zoom and Slack. At Giants Forum, we use Google Meet and Slack. Um, but I think it's important that you to learn to, to reduce the distractions because I think you have, you can easily have a few thousands of emails in a day, a few, uh, really a lot of notifications on Slack. Um, and a few messages from your family and friends. And I think this can be overwhelming for, uh, for you. So I think it's important to plan your day in order to, uh, to, you know, say, you know, some people say I do emails and uh, only in this period of time in the morning and in order to be able also to do some work done during the day. Um, and that's why I think it's important to to learn to um, work more asynchronously than asynchronously in a distributed company. So what that means, for example, imagine that you are an engineer and you have a problem and you don't know the answer and you need some help for it. And basically, you will need to um, ask another colleague uh, you know, about a solution, a possible solution, and then you will probably use Slack in order to get an immediate response. But this sometimes, you know, if you are always um, asking direct, you know, uh, synchronously, this can be overwhelming for someone. Um, so, for example, in a more asynchronous way, you basically, you know, you are an engineer, you create a pull request with uh, your feature, and then uh, you basically ask, uh, ask for a feedback from other colleagues um, in that uh, pull request in GitHub, and then you wait a few days maybe to, to get a feedback. But this also makes you, um, you know, you, makes you also feel like you are stuck if you need to wait for a few days for, you know, for a feedback. And I think, you know, this, the reality is that you need to, to learn to, um, to do things in parallel, basically, not to wait for one, uh, one uh, feedback or one answer and to work on multiple things um, on the same time in order not to be blocked by one. So it, this kind of requires 
maybe a bit of adjustment uh, from my point of view. But, you know, people have this uh, impression that they are, if they are working from home, then they kind of need to be available, you know, 24 hours. And the way basically people do, and also the way I also did it, is that you block your calendar and also with personal things. So, like, you need to go to the doctor or you need to also spend time uh, with your family. Probably, you know, there are some people that are very... For them, it's very important to, you know, to have these two hours in the evening to have dinner with the family. I don't know, things like this, right? Um, you also block, you know, um, the time where you are sleeping. And, and this is important, right? Especially if your team is distributed um, across multiple time zones, you know, that uh, might be difficult for someone to know when basically you are sleeping. Um, yeah, and also another one is have regular one-on-ones over, over video. Um, this is important because you, it's important to also know, you as a manager, it's important to know how uh, your team feels about, if they have any blockers, and you can also discuss you know, all the things to discuss as a manager, as a people manager with the team, you can basically, uh, you will do it over video. You know, I think people have this, um, um, people feel like if you are working from home, then they feel like they are not able to have a close connection with their colleagues. But from my experience, I feel the other way around. I feel like if in a distributed company, I feel like you, you will have a closer connection with your colleagues just because you see them in their uh, natural environment, right? And if you are going to the office, I feel like the moment you open the door to the office, you are a different person. You are more like a business person. Right, and then you just do a chit chat and 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 things like this. Um, but you know, when you are working in a distributed environment, and then you have you see the colleagues, um, you know, surrounded by their family, and often you see a colleague with their baby in their uh, hand during the uh, during the conference call. You feel like you know you are better um, uh, or you have a closer relationship with them. Um, so I think also, you know, many companies out there, they also organize face-to-face -face time. I think this is also important. And, you know, there are some companies they do this twice or three times a year where the entire team or maybe the entire company is gathering in one place uh, to meet face to face. I think this is this is something that is important to have, um, and um, just to also you know have some uh, some time with uh, with uh, with the people. So basically, you like like how tall this person is and how this person is. Uh, like yeah, this this sometimes helps. So recognize work. Um, so I think this is something that um, no matter if it's a distributed company or not, I think I believe that you need to judge people by their results, not by their working hours. I think in a distributed environment anyway, you cannot really, um, uh, you know, count the number of, uh, of hours a person work. I think from my point of view, this is, uh, I think this is how I usually evaluate people, like their results over a longer period of time, usually a few months. Um, and this is also allows, allows them to, uh, to innovate. And from my point of view, this is a, really the most important thing is to offer um, engineers to uh, to have the freedom to uh, to innovate and another thing is like okay they they come up with new ideas but I think it's important to give early feedback and you know not wait for um, for uh, for the 
you know, for the idea to um, to become bigger and uh, before you you give a feedback. Career growth, I think this is, um, and I feel like when in a distributed environment, I feel like you kind of need to trust people more, um, just because I think people like feel like they can trust someone if they see someone near there in the in the office. But I think maybe you know in 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 a distributed environment, you need to trust people more. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, from 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 the beginning, um, I think it's important to encourage people to drive projects by themselves, um, because yeah, uh, I know we are a bit of uh, a bit late here, so uh, um, I think an, an important um, an important thing to um, to uh, to you as a manager to help people grow in their career is to mentor them. And because of that, um, I created this uh, nonprofit organization called Tupu.io, where we offer free mentorship for underrepresented groups in tech. Um, and so feel free to, uh, to join uh, the, our list of amazing mentors, or if you want to be mentee as well so this is free for everyone um, this is basically all the people that are helping me with running this uh, are volunteers uh, you can also apply to be a volunteer if you want uh, all the mentors are also volunteers and it's amazing how many people are willing to uh, you know um, give a bit of, um, uh, of from their free time to help others grow in their career and succeed in, in, in their career. So let's see what's coming next. Um, so what will happen after this coronavirus hopefully ends um, and will basically companies uh, will, will come having again uh, um, an office culture and you know you see a lot of things on media like twitter goes remote and host global all hands on slack even google is now is uh, working from home until september 2021 and uh, i think it's thinking to allow three days a week in office afterwards so i feel like you know there is this coronavirus managed to uh, to uh, to change uh, to rapidly rapidly change the way companies are are structured and I know many people are there and in, the, in in um, are are saying about the hybrid work model uh, that will come in the future. That's something that we don't know for sure what will come. This is what um, the founder of said uh, in one of um, uh, his tweets, he said that for sure something will happen, but we don't know uh, if it, how the companies uh, will, will change, if it will be a hybrid approach or something else. But for sure, this coronavirus changed something. Uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. And yeah. <laughs>